Okay. We're ready to roll. There we go, it's coming in. Hi everyone! Welcome to the Pony Podcast! Hello! <laughs> we are recording live from the FBI event at Harass Japan. So we've got international. Mm. We are abroad and exotic. I actually think being here has done wonders for my French. Really? Yeah. I think the woman... So I went to order hay earlier. And I started off asking in French if I could buy some more hay. And I think, because my French accent is all right, I think she thought I would could speak French. And then she said a sentence that I had absolutely no hope of understanding. And I just kind of said that like... Oh my god. <laughs> what? <laughs> and the, and then she spoke in like perfect English and I kind of looked at her and was like, You know you knew <laughs> you knew I can't speak French. You just wanted to watch me struggle with it. <laughs> you. But yeah, I I've I've enjoyed it. I, I don't speak very good French anyway, so My G C S E French is doing me very well. It's doing me very well. <laughs> when we go to Germany, my G C German will come in handy. Yeah. Um, I had a woman come up to me at the table today and start speaking to me in French and I looked at her blank and was just like, oh my. <laughs> <laughs> and she was like, a little uh-huh. bit. And then we worked out what she wanted and I directed her in the right direction. <laughs> I keep having people, English people come up to me and ask if I speak English. You're like, yes, very well. <laughs> <laughs> With actually, a very good accent. Actually fluent. <laughs> <laughs> Native a, speaker status. It's a skill. Um, so we're going to talk today a little bit about are like preparations and the, the ordeal of traveling here which it you, wasn't an ordeal it wasn't an ordeal but hopefully everyone will have seen a little bit about what we were getting up to on our story because i've been vaguely documenting it yeah and tess has been in charge of it because my phone wouldn't pick up internet for like the first three days and then they, everyone was like who time try it turning it off and on again and i was like <laughs> I don't think that'll work tried it off and on and now it picks up the internet so no, i will have <laughs> now that was why you were so adamant it wasn't going to work. <laughs> <laughs> so adamant you were not going to work. And then you were like, I'm worried if I turn it off, it's not going to turn back on again. Because <laughs> it's so old. It's okay. Fine. So what were we doing to prepare the horses for travel? Um, if you want to travel abroad and compete abroad, your horses have to have purple FBI purple passports. How much do they cost if you get one? £240. Ouch. <laughs> my house has one and she has not been abroad yet because we were planning to go abroad and then she got chest infection. Oh, that's painful. <laughs> that that's painful. But it was better than it could have been because I thought because I'm Dutch and yeah. I compete under the Dutch Federation, yeah. I had to send it to the Netherlands to get them to approve it because it's their yeah. thing. And I phoned up the Dutch Federation and they were like, can I just send it to the British shop? And I was like, well, I, don't I don't know. So. <laughs> I don't think so. So I phoned up the British eventing and they were like, yeah, sure, send it here. And I was like, Cool. Sweet. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Um, you also need, so you need their passports. They have to have a passport, even if they're not competing, you can just have a normal one. Um, they also need travel documents, but so if you're going between the island, the UK and France, you don't need to have a vet certificate. But if you're going anywhere else, then a vet has to have seen your horse at least six weeks bef- six six weeks before to do blood tests and check that they're okay mm-hmm. and they're not gonna be spreading any nasty diseases onto We found onto- about this. Um, for Easter because we went to Holland yeah. and it was when Brexit was meant to happen like a week after Brexit oh, yeah. and no one knew what was happen- happening with travelling and Does I was anyone like still? <laughs> <laughs> and I was like well, what if they need a vet certificate and Brexit happens week before and you need a vet certificate and you need to be done six weeks ago and then yeah. you can't go and they were like it'll be fine <laughs> and in the end it was fine because it didn't happen but yeah it was but fine. it could have not been fine it so been fine. moral of the story get your things done um if you're if you're thinking of like moving feed or something, so like some people make sure they travel their horses on haylage just because it's easier to travel with, and it's nicer to deal with when you're like on the journey. And less dust. And less dust. So if you're going to do redoing something like that, you're going to want to feed like switch them over in good time. You need to make sure our vaccinations are up to date, which you all should be doing anyway because yeah. of the new rules. Because everyone's getting really tight on it. Though I did see Wellington riding put up a, their fun ride or something today. And they were saying that you have to have your horse vaccinated, but it only has to have its 12-month jab. It doesn't have to have Easter. Which I was a bit like, why well, make such a big deal about just a 12-month one? But maybe it was to let people know that if they had a horse that doesn't normally go anywhere, it could still come to their yeah. fun ride. Maybe. Um, Make sure when you're travelling, if you've got to do a stopover... 
So you allow in your travel time places to let them off and rest and have their heads down, have a little graze, um, mm. which they should do every sort of three to six hours. Let's see. Yeah. And you, like you might need to book somewhere that has like a stable that you can put them in so that they can really relax mm -hmm. and they can you can leave them alone and they can just chill. When we went to Holland, we stopped at Dover yeah. for two hours. To let the horse have a yeah. went to the stable, had a little mooch round, put him back on the lorry, got yeah. the boat. When we were coming back from Italy, we went, we stopped in. Where did we stop? We stopped in Dijon, and then in just this side. So we stopped once in Dijon and once in just out of Dover. And they stopped for like three or four hours so the driver could have a sleep mm -hmm. and the horses could like have a sleep in the stable, get their heads down, do some mm -hmm. grazing. We could hand walk them um, and just like chill basically. And I think it was really good for them to have that like proper downtime instead of just like out a walk back on. Yeah. Also, make sure that um, you get your lorry service before you travel abroad. I would say do this definitely yeah. because, you know, you're going different roads, you're going a long way. And if your lorry's only used to travelling up to two hours, mm. probably three, it's going to be very different doing a long haul journey and yeah. you're going to find out whether it's roadworthy before you, you go. You don't want to get to the middle of France and then realise that you're not getting any further. Yeah. Um, okay, so for actually travelling them, you want to make sure they have boots and a tail guard, not a tail bandage, because tail bandages can cut off the blood supply. Yeah. They're really easy to do too tight. And boots are better than bandages on their legs for the same reason as... Yeah tail bandages if they've got any pressure points mm -hmm. they're going to have them on for ages and the pressure points will be more um obvious yeah um some people like to have them in fluffy head collars because they're going to have it on for a long time and they're not like if they are any pressure points and the fluff is going to help that um make sure when you pack your lorry that there are certain things that you have really easy access to for the journey mm. like a water container and a bucket mm. so that you can just jump in fill a bucket off of the water yeah. when you're on the ferry and I always like to have a skip and a forked hand so if you do them off for a walk then someone can skip out the lorry so they're not just standing in poo yeah. for however um, many hours. <clears throat> if you are going on a ferry, so like we came on a ferry down to Ha, um, most, if, especially if you're going on a longer one, most ferry companies will let you go down and check on the horses like in the middle of the journey but you have to be accompanied by a member of their crew so you're going to have to like go and ask permission and make sure it's okay and get the relevant like passes to go down um and normally you have like they only gave us like 15 minutes didn't they yeah um not very long no um, um but that's like if you're going on an overnight ferry if you're just going dover to calais they're only on it for an hour so yeah. you're going to be all right because our lorry was our, lorry, our ferry was seven hours yeah so we went down and checked on them two or three times either way you want to make sure that when you park the park parking attendants leave you enough room behind your lorry so that you can get the back down and let air circulate around them. Um. Um, when you get to the ferry port, you have to hand over all the passports of people and the horses on the mm -hmm. lorry, and also your travel documents from the British Equestrian Federation, yeah. BEF, that say that you're allowed to travel those horses to the country that you're going to. Um, and you have to make sure with the passports that if you all the people that you've got on board mm -hmm. The guy can see, yeah, um, so that he knows those are the right people, and you're not just taking two, but I've got three passports. Yeah. And I'm going to bring someone else back. You know, they. I don't know whether it's a strip going from the UK to France, but when you're coming back through Calais, they put you on an X-ray machine, and they X-ray the lorry. Yeah, which is terrifying when you do it. And then if you have too many people, they always like you obviously get massive amounts of trouble. Mm -hmm. Um, and you also have to be really careful. When you're coming back, especially through Calais, because there are so many refugees and everyone there, you have to um, you have to make sure all of your tack lockers are locked, and all of your like the door to the living's locked, like basically any anywhere they can get in is locked because people will like try and get into the lockers and try and hide in there. And one of the girls I was driving with coming back from Italy, she was apparently they'd been stopped outside Calais because there'd been an incident beforehand and this officer was basically like, okay, if someone jumps on the front of the cab, do not open your window, do not open the door, 
just lock everything and carry on driving and an officer will come and get them off. Like, imagine being given that, oh that advice. Like, how terrified you would be. That's, that's for travelling. When you arrive, wherever you're going, let them get their heads down to graze and let their noses drain because otherwise they can get, like, travelling flu, which is really bad. And then give them a walk, stretch their legs and some quiet time to let them settle down and relax and have a drink while it's all, like, quiet and nice. I personally wouldn't... Even if you want to go on a long journey and may miss a feed, yeah. I would try and give it a really wet feed on the like yeah. coming off the ferry or something. But if you missed a feed, I wouldn't feed it immediately. Yeah. When you've arrived somewhere. Yeah. I'd let it have like half an hour, forty five yeah. minutes to just It's a bit then. like exercise though, isn't it? You don't want to feed them immediately afterwards, you wanna let them like have time to just have a little breath and chill. Um so we'll talk a little bit about our journey to Harass. Um so, um, we didn't get an overnight ferry, we got a daytime ferry. We got a very, very early morning ferry. So we left at four, well, we left at four mm. in the morning mm. and we went to get a quarter past eight ferry. Mm. Um, but it was all fine, we got there and it was sort of very early. And found another um, eventer going to harass, so Yay. we made friends, that was good. And then, yeah, we went on the ferry for seven hours. It's nice, it's nice. When you travel for stuff like that, because there are so many other events going as well. So if you see someone in a lorry, you can pretty much guarantee they're going to the same place as you are. And everyone's so, like, friendly and chatty. Like, we... Mm. What, we went and did all our checks with her groom. And so we got to, like, know them a little bit then. And then we arrived together... And, like, we were looking for directions and they sent us all the directions that they had. And so yeah. we were, like, texting the whole way there. And no, it was just really nice. Yeah. Um, when we first arrived here, you see, so like, drive in and you have to stop before you get to the stables or anything. You stop, you unload the horses and you have their vet check. Um, so you unload them at the gate, they scan their microchips and they make sure that, like, the same horse is doing the same thing. Um, and like you have, they have you have the right passports, and then we unloaded the horses in their stables, and then we came back for the lorry. Yeah. Um, and, and there was that little French man parking everyone. Yeah, and I was like, look, it's a really nice stable. And I saw a stable. I tried to park in there, and he was like, no, 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 no. And that was, made when, us he, turn that was when he was like, oh no, this is for a French rider, and we were like, oh, you're saving spaces for the French people. And then we tried to save a space next to our lorry for the second lorry that was coming with the other horses, and he was like, no, 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 we're going to put two lorries in there. And it's like, it's, I mean, it's a tiny space. Like, I wish I could show you the picture. It's like, you can fit one lorry in. You. In, they still haven't fit two in, really. <laughs> They've, like, put one lorry in and then, like, wedged the front of our second lorry into the gap. Yeah. <laughs> but it's, there, there's no room. There is no room. They and park them very tight over there. It's very... I'm impressed how many they've got in here, to be honest. Yeah. Like, it is impressive. It's not a big area. But they are, like... We have... Like, Tetris. We have a lorry on one side that I could touch... And lorry on the other side that I could probably touch if we had a window closer to it. And we've got a lorry in front of us that, that we could touch if you're leaning out the front window. Yeah, you like you can't walk down the gap between it. Like we are I don't know how we're gonna get out. It's fine, if most people have left by the time we leave. <laughs> Fingers bloody crossed. <laughs> Fingers crossed they have. <laughs> um Little things you should be aware of, like if you're travelling abroad, that it's good to check. Like here they're all bedded down on straw. And I, th I think you can get shavings, but only if you but go you need and... to bring your own shavings and your shavings. No, apparently, um, the guy I platted up for, ha he got here and was like, I'm not putting my... He's in the, he's in the Nations Cup. But he was oh. like, I'm not putting my horse on straw. And they were like, oh, okay. And they gave him a bed of, like, five Bud Max bales. Oh, nice. Yeah. I don't know when they're going to charge him for it, but... Because normally, especially over here, you have... It's more expensive to have shavings and straw, yeah. and, like, the straw is free. In fairness, like, when we were driving over, how many fields did we see full of straw bales? Yes. Like, absolutely full. They have loads of it. Yeah. Um, and the straw's nice as well, so it's not too bad. But they only sell hay, they don't sell haylage. So, like, if we'd swapped all our horses over to haylage and then we'd got here and realised they only sell hay, we'd mm -hmm. be a bit stuck. Yeah. Um, they've got a good wash base here. Mm-hmm. Quite unusual. On concrete? Yeah. With overhead hoses? Yeah. 
And then well, seven and a six, five of them. I feel like they've wheel, they've moved a little bit because half of them are on concrete and half of them are like, well, you have about a foot of concrete and then big lies. sign saying, do not tie your horse to them and someone yeah. tied their horse to them and that's why it's moved. Yeah, probably. That was slightly. When I, the place I went in Italy, they had wash bay, they had like concrete wash bays and like wood, like brick ones. But if there were like six wash bays, I think, and if everyone was, if mm. each one was being used, the water pressure was like, I could have dribbled on a horse and it would have made more impact, but it was awful. Whereas here, they're really good. Like, yeah. here, here, you can, if you get someone over the top of a horse, you really get them in the face. <laughs> it's, uh, it's, yeah. I don't think I've ever been so, so badly barfing a horse. Um, oh, we've made a few friends to people around us. Mm. So, what's the favourite opposite us is Andrew Nicholson, our Andrew Nicholson's horses. Mm. So, we've made friends with his head girl. Um, Becca, she's lovely. She's really lovely, and um, she's met helping us out. And... You can make friends with Asia Nicola next because I noticed he's moved in. Yes, um, yes. he's not very chatty though. We well, made friends. There's a Thai rider next to us, and Ooh. Maddie's busily making friends with him. He speaks. He's here with a French rider. But he doesn't speak any French, so all the French grooms are trying to talk to him in English, but their English is not that great. Aww. And it's, it's a fun dynamic to watch. <laughs> it's good. Um, it's, and, like, coming to these events, especially when you are one of, like, quite a small English cohort, kind of you're, like, you're on, on, a, on a bit of a team. Mm. And so everyone's really, like, really nice, really welcoming, really chatty. Like, we had, we had Becca in the lorry with a bottle of wine yesterday and had a nice chat and we'll probably go there's like live music and stuff this weekend so we'll go down to that with her like it's a proper nice like fun friendly atmosphere yeah and it means and even that when it was checking it down this morning yeah everyone was still like, out and about like yeah. who and this little guy that turns up in the morning to deliver <gasps> baguettes and croissants freshly and cooked croissants and chocolate so you can go over and buy that if you want i'm gonna come like, come home about four stone heavier than i am now mm-hmm. just because there's always croissants and bread about mm-hmm. like it's brilliant this is my dream this yeah. is my dream place and it's nice i feel like here because you're not like you're not around all the normal people and all the normal pros. Like, the fact that we're just down the road from Andrew Nicholson and, like, I needed someone to walk the four-star with, so I asked his head girl to ask him for me and he was, apparently he was like, oh, yeah, like, I normally would, but he's here with the Swiss team Mm because he's their trainer and he was like, oh, I'm not sure whether I can because, um, like, obviously they're paying me to, like, stay, be here and to coach them and I don't think they'd, like, like, like it very much if I, like, went off and did, like, did a walk for someone for free, which is fair enough, but, like, just the fact that he was so chill and being was like oh yeah like normally I definitely would and was really nice about it um and I had some banter with him because his horse he was at the trot up and his horse was <laughs> just like not not that it was like off wrong or anything but um it was just being so lazy like I've never seen any horse put less effort into trotting and like just like he would like he was in the like warm-up bit for the trot up and trying to get it to trot and he'd like jog off and the horse would just stop <laughs> I just wasn't having any of it and I walked past him in the stables with one of Maddie's and was like your grey horse it's just not giving you anything extra is it and he was like this one and I was like yeah and he was like yeah she's very relaxed <laughs> and I was like just walked past like that's one way of putting it <laughs> like it literally it might have been an inch off the floor in trot but there was nothing more than that like technically trotting but nothing else <laughs> oh when you were we've, we've found this week sometimes we're busy sometimes we're not yeah um so make sure you bring stuff to, or make the most of it and use yeah. it wisely so like i had the opportunity to walk the four star course yesterday yeah which was good i spent the afternoon doing that mm. um with as a swedish rider of the nation's cup team mm. walked around with her and also the fact that we're at a stud, so we're going to hopefully try and have a little wander around the stud yeah, at some point. Have a look. And you've got a visitor centre you can go to. Mm. Um, I went for a run one morning. Mm. I got to see some of the countryside. I have not been for a run. <laughs> Should probably go for a run, but probably won't because you've seen the state of my trainers. Ah, uh, yeah. I feel like they won't make. They won't last a run. <laughs> I think they just about survived mucking out. <laughs> I don't think they're going to last a run. Um, but yeah, like, and like making the most of your time, like there's no fun just sitting in the lorry and doing nothing. Like you may as well get out, walk like the level above your course if you're looking at moving up. Um, and like yeah, just explore a little bit, make the most of it. Um, we thought we'd include some like essential things to pack because it's so easy to forget stuff. 
Um, so make sure you bring stuff to do. Um, <laughs> like we're very lucky we've got a DVD player in the story, yeah. so we've got DVDs. But you can like, make sure you bring a book mm. or admin. Like I've been going through. I've got loads of articles I've ripped out, of course, and how I haven't had a chance to read. Mm. I've been working way through those. Stuff that doesn't rely on Wi-Fi. Yes. Because it's very rare to have A, Wi-Fi, and B, good Wi-Fi. Yes. Like, there's technically Wi-Fi here, but mm, you're not... <laughs> you're or even not electricity, because we went to a French event um, at the end of the season a couple of years ago, yeah. and the, the hookup was shocking. Really? Like, we'd put a DVD on, and we'd get five minutes in, and all the power would just go... Oh, no. And the next morning, we kept, like, I kept just tripping it, and we went to the same managers, and just like, yeah... It's not very good here. It's quite free. Wonderful, great. You're like, what are you gonna do about it? And just and say, we can't and do anything. So what ended up happening was the next night, it happened again, and uh, the girl went out to see if she could like do something about it. And there was this Frenchman there. Yeah. And he was like, we're just gonna unplug someone and see who's tripping in. <laughs> <laughs> and every time it trips, we plug someone back in and we dig someone else out. <laughs> That's such a French solution to the problem. Um, she was like, again. <laughs> Not my idea. Um, the, it's also good to pack lots of string. So we've bought a massive roll of baler twine. And I, honestly, like, I've hung rugs up with it. I've tied doors back with it. I've tied a lot of Canadian flags up with it. <laughs> um, and I've tied it. We've got Canadian stall guards. They've gone up with it. I've got all ties for all the horses. They've mm-hmm. got them. I've tied a bucket of water to the wall so the horse can't, can't knock, knock it over, over. <laughs> the horse can still knock it over though can it no it can spin it oh but yeah it's not good on the floor. <laughs> it can spin it good. <laughs> um like it's one of those things but like you can you can fix pretty much anything with a bot with a ball of yeah. string um it is great um hair. also pack one of pretty much every rug that you have so like a waterproof a fleece a lightweight um, lycra hoods, a spare lycra hood in case it gets wet, maybe a spare, like, I I normally pack, like, a lightweight waterproof, a heavier waterproof, a uh, stable sheet, a uh, heavier sheet in case it's cold, a, a sh- um, rubbish waterproof, so to hang over the front of the stable if the rain's, like, horizontal, um, like, just lots of rugs, like, I feel like rugs are the one thing, like, you're never gonna... You're never going to regret having more rugs, but you might regret having less rugs. Yes. Yes. Yeah. That's true. Um, right. Make sure you pack some shampoo. Yeah. Because I'd be that first and it'd be like on the first day, my horse is clean, I don't need it anymore. And yeah. then you get to day two and you're like, ah. I don't think, I, I mean, it probably is because I'm looking after three horses, but I don't think I've ever done so much bathing at a competition. Like I've yeah. like I've bathed a million horses. Also, horses. If you bath them before your cross country, so you like bath them for the dressage and the trot up, and then they like do the dressage, the trot up. They go cross country. If you bath them after the cross country, because they work out all of the grease and dirt, like gets swept to the top of their coat. You bath that off, and they look unbelievable the next day. Like they look so good. Like that's why all the horses at badminton on the last day they look. Un- like unbelievable because they go around the cross country they sweat everything out and they get bath and it just means their coat is like nothing but hair like no dirt no grease nothing mm-hmm. and they look so good and Maddie always laughs at me because I love a double bath like she had one she had someone to come and try one of the horses and um I like bathed it and she was like I've got to ride it why, why are you bathing it and I was like no 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 like bathed it no, I sent her out to ride it, and I was like, work it really, really hard, like, make him sweat. And she came back in, and he was, like, dripping. And I bathed him again, and he looked unbelievable. Like, it looked so good. And then the girl fell off her horse and broke her collarbone and couldn't come and try him, so no one came and tried him. But he looked so good, so it was worth it. Yeah, make sure you, know. you bring some steps. Yeah. Um, because they're always useful, not just for plating, getting on, but for, like, tying things up around your stable if you yeah. can't reach it. And, like, uh, we've put a gazebo up, and I'm sure something's going to break at some point and we're yeah. going to stand on steps to fix it yeah um, bring a gazebo if you have one and stuff like tables and chairs for sitting outside which is always nice and just makes things a little bit more like homely uh, the one thing that we haven't brought that I wish we had was a saddle stand yeah um, because we've got one of those that hooks on the outside of the stable yeah but actually for cleaning tack you need I want it like a freestanding, a freestanding one. one. Yeah, we have a trolley that has like a basket on the bottom Ooh. that's like a saddle stand. We've got a collapsible saddle stand oh. that falls in half. Oh and yeah, again. 
they're cool. Um, make sure you bring food and uh, more food and then snacks <laughs> and spare food. And maybe if someone has a car, find a nearby shop and get more food. Just because you're always, like, when you're at one of these, you're always busy. Like, you're always moving about. And I feel like you, like, run down so easily. And you do. It's a long time to be, like, constantly on the move. Well, like, I had breakfast this morning. Yeah. And took the horses out. And then one of them got rid of it. So then I had to, like, bath it and plait it. And then mm. I went to the next one. And I bathed it and plaited it and cleaned tack. And mm. got it ready for dressage. It went off to dressage. And then I was like... It's like three o'clock. I yeah. don't have any more food. <laughs> yeah, and you get like when you have times and you're having to work to like competition times. Like you can't just be like, oh, it's twelve o'clock. I have to go and have lunch because you you've got to work. <laughs> you've got to be doing work. Um, I would make sure that you bring drink lots of drinking water with you because yeah. they don't always have drinking water on the tap. So like bottled water, big, big bottles two liter water. bottles of water. Yeah. It's really good. Um, and like, I'd like to bring some of the little ones as well because they're really good to like, carry around. Yeah. They're not as big and bulky. I like the big ones. Um, wellies. The same principle as the rugs. Um, wellies, trainers, flip-flops. Flip-flops? Flip-flops for going to the shower. Oh, yeah, okay. Yeah. Girl. I yeah. flip-flops with horses. Nah. <laughs> flip-flops for going to the shower. And I find flip-flops are good for when you go and do feeds because you're not like going into the stable. You're just throwing the feed in and then you can come back do your teeth, leave them alone while they eat, mm -hmm. and then go back. But like they're just they're just easier to be honest. And at least one good long coat. Yeah. I should probably show a picture of me in my big long coat. I bought like a on you know I was I was wondering whether to pack it and I was like it is a ridiculous thing to pack when you're going somewhere hot. But I've got like a great big long barber coat that is massive and it's so comfortable and I love it. But like it's when you're going somewhere hot, it is a silly thing to pack. And I'm so glad I did. Like, I was putting it in the lorry like, you are ridiculous. Like why are you putting this in? You're not going to need it. But today has rained and rained and rained and rained and rained and then stopped and then rained and then rained and rained. And it was horrible. And I was walking around in my coat like, I have nailed this. It is like a tent like your head's at the top of a tent yes and it feels like that but it also feels a bit like a cape in that you feel quite powerful in it <laughs> like, it's incredible <laughs> maddie had um this guy came to give her a lesson and he arrived and he was like oh i've just got off the plane from belgium so i didn't bring a coat do you have one and i was like oh like all i've got is this big one that will do because it was like, like stair rodding it down and they gave it to him and he literally like picked up the sides yeah. of it and held them out it's massive like it's huge <laughs> held them out and he was like what is this? And I was like, this is a coat. And he was like, no, this is a marquee. <laughs> and I was like, yeah, do you want it or do you not? Like, pick a side. Do we like the coat? Do we not like the coat? Because you can not wear it if you don't want it. He found one of my inhalers in the pocket and pulled it out and was like, what is this? And I was like, oh, I'm really asthmatic. That's my inhaler. And he was like, why? And I was like, because otherwise I die. <laughs> I don't know what you want from me. <laughs> he was looking at me like I was the weirdest person ever. And I was like, why am I being judged on a coat and medication? <laughs> what is wrong with you? Yeah. Oh, I need to, oh, I will, I'll get you to take a photo of it tomorrow. Yeah. We'll put a photo of me in my massive coat. coat. Oh, my lovely coat. <laughs> I love it so much. I give myself a good long coat because <clears> I just finished teaching at camp and I was at my second camp Great. and it chucked it down all day. Yeah. And all I have as a waterproof coat that's actually waterproof is my mm. short Ariat one. Yeah. And I turned up and the DC was like, it's all You're going to die. And I was like, yes. And she was like, You are a teacher instructor now. You need a DC you coat. You need instructor coats. <laughs> <laughs> this one, I cannot recommend those ones enough because I can fit. Um, like, there was one day when I was at Harry's that I was wearing. I had like a, two base layers because it was it was like when it was winter still. I was wearing two base layers, a hoodie with the hood up, a coat that um, regatta coat mm -hmm. I have, the, a coat with a hood up, and that on the top of it. And I was dry on the inside. <laughs> Everyone else was soaked, and I was dry. I was wearing two coats, but I was still dry. And it is like it, yeah, it's so worth it. So like, it's such a ridiculous coat, but it's so mm -hmm. worth it. Um, that's all we have. Yeah. Thank you for listening. Um, make sure you have a look at our Instagram mm. and Facebook to see what we've been up to and how it links yeah. into our episode. We will be adding, I think I, I'll put them all on a highlight so that you can like go back and see them at your leisure. Um, and we'll add stuff that we've forgotten to mention in there as well. 
Um, and this is this is our first non like our first being somewhere. It's like our first yeah. tour diary. Oh, it is a first tour diary. <laughs> I nearly put on our highlight my quarter marks earlier because I feel like a lot of people like a lot of it was one thing a lot of people were like oh I'd really like to know how to do quarter marks properly and I was so proud of them earlier. God, they looked so good. They looked so, maybe the second trot up. I'll yeah. Do. I'll do a turnout highlight. Um, and yeah, so if you've enjoyed this episode, make sure to check us out on Facebook and Instagram at The Pony Podcast. And give us a review on Apple Podcasts and Spotify so that other people can find us and tell your friends and family about us um, and annoy them like we do about it. <laughs> um, and yeah, thanks so much for listening. Thank you. Bye. Bye.